the church label is probably very useful in that it helps to, again, lend legitimacy to the kinds of religious practices that are happening. But I think the sad thing is that uh, religious freedom is protected, not spiritual freedom. And I think, you know, spirituality is a much broader domain than religiosity. Um, I think there's a lot of people who uh, explore these types of uh, understanding through other means than going to a sort of traditional service once a week uh, in something that's ordained by a text or a text-based practice such as uh, Judaism or Christianity or Islam. Uh, these much more ancient forms of uh, shamanic practices I think are the grounding of religion originally um, but they certainly don't fit within the paradigm of, of what's protected uh, within sort of contemporary constitutional structures that again have usually been defined quite narrowly. So uh, what constitutes a bona fide religion uh, is a fascinating question both legally and philosophically and that's one of the main arguments that comes up in these legal and policy decisions that are being made is what constitutes a bona fide religion. Uh, in the case of the UDV I, I think it was found to be a, a bona fide religious practice um, whereas something like a vegetalismo style shamanic practice uh, might not be recognized that way. Although I understand there's several churches that have been formed uh, to try to protect these practices under the rubric of church or religion, uh, even though they may not uh, take these kinds of the, the elements that we traditionally associate with a church, such as a text as a, as a base or uh, a regular sort of service uh, with, a, with a sort of ordained minister or someone who's leading it.